This could be the best 10X ever. Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be going over the 10X event that's going to be starting soon. I'm going to give you a full breakdown of the champions in it and kind of grade them individually, go through them really quick, and then let you know if you should pull shards or not and all of that good stuff. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, I know there's a lot of red dots on my screen. I just woke up. I just kind of logged into the game. I'm kind of wrapping my head around what's going on today. I have not had a chance to dive in and get my, you know, morning routine done, do my clan boss fight, spend some tokens, spend some energy, make sure I'm below max and all that. I want to get this out to you guys ASAP. So, okay, we are going to be having a 10x boosted event that will launch tomorrow to summon, get this, Vizier, Harvest Jack, Venus, Occult Brawler, Ursine Ice Crusher, which, eh, Stagnite, Ceres, and Silar. So literally, all of those champions are really good, except for Ursine Ice Crusher. So uh, this is probably the first time I've seen a 10X where I get the argument for, uh, for, for players to really pull shards and uh, not have to wait for a 2X. Because, uh, you know, if you follow my channel, typically... I go by the same routine of saying, hey, uh, you know, the, these kind of uh, trick some players into thinking the chances of getting epics and legendaries is boosted, but it is not. If you go to the portal, it is normal summoning rates. It's just if you get an epic or legendary from the normal summoning rates, there's a much higher likelihood that it will be these certain champions. So now let's go through and give you a step-by-step -step kind of quick overview of the champions that will be in this 10x. So the first one is going to be Vizier, and Vizier is actually one of the highest champions on my most wanted list in terms of champions I don't have that I need on my account. And the main thing about Vizier is the A1. He is an amazing debuff extender, so you throw him in a clan boss fight, you get the, you get the debuffs placed that you need, decrease defense, weaken, poison, all that stuff. And then he just sits there and extends them over and over and over and over. I've seen screenshots of people, you know, 50, 60, 70 turns of debuffs on the clan boss with Vizier just popping off and increasing the duration of all of those debuffs. So Vizier is absolutely insane for a clan boss team. And if you summon him, he will be amazing for you in that capacity. The next one is going to be Harvest Jack. Now, Harvest Jack is an amazing cc here he's got a lot of suppression in terms of dungeon waves and faction wars and he can also be very good in the arena he's got a good a1 that's a triple hitter that can place fear and seal buff he can do all sorts every ability here has a ton of utility in terms of you know block buffs and fear and true fear and decrease speed and it, it, sleep and then he's got a passive that decreases duration of their buffs he's got insane base stats of uh, 27,000 HP, 102 base speed. So Harvest Jack is also a very solid legendary. Then we have Venus, a void legendary from the Sacred Order, who is arguably the most generally useful champion in the game. Uh, she's got an A1 that is a multi-hitter that places a 5% poison, an A2 that is a three-turn AoE, with a booked 100% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense and the big version of weekend. So it's an AOE, three turn cooldown, big version defense, big version weekend. Uh, one of the best abilities in the game in terms of general utility. And then we've also got another AOE that places HP burn and you can pump that up to a 75% chance for AOE HP burn. And we've also got a tan ability with Cupidus kind of the Valentine's Day theme uh, with Cupidus and Venus. And then she's also got an ally HP in all battles by 33%, which is a really good aura and really good base stats of 22.6k HP. A uh, thousand defense is a tad low for being a legendary, but she's got really good HP to make up for that. The base speed of 112 is one of the highest in the game. So yeah, Venus is, there's legendaries that are better than her in certain areas of the game like the arena and stuff uh, in terms of a specific area but for general 
account progression and usefulness venus is arguably the number one champion in the game the next one is occult brawler now uh the thing you want to know about occult brawler is he's going to be insane for the clan boss in terms of being a poisoner damage dealer in a clan boss because he's going to be placing poisons on his a1 uh the a2 is really convoluted i won't stress you with that right here by reading that for three minutes but he's got this passive that places a poison on himself but it is the small version and you can easily negate that in a in a, in a fight and he's got a 70 percent chance of placing a five percent poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns it's a five percent poison for four turns and in, your, in the clan boss, the random enemy is fine. It's just always going on the clan boss. So he is one of the best epics in the game for a, a clan boss damage dealer. So he definitely useful if you do not have him yet. And then we have Ursine Ice Crusher. Um, now, I know I, I, I it, earlier in the video, I kind of <laughs> acted like he's garbage or whatever. He's not that bad. Um, he, he, he's from the, the first battle pass a, a few months ago. Was one of the featured champions. But, uh, he, you know, his kit is all right. He's got an A1. He's based on defense uh, that can block cooldown skills. But, I mean, that's decent for an A1. And then he's got an A2 that can be booked to three turns. It's AOE that you can book to 100% chance of decreasing crit rate, which is okay for sustain. And then a passive that decreases the damage all allies receive from critical hits, which is not bad. I mean, it, that's got some pretty good toughness uh, utility for your team. And then fill the champion's turn meter by 5% whenever, whenever an enemy lands a normal, strong, or weak hit. So it can get some turn meter manipulation and ally HP in all battles by 25% with some pretty decent base defense of 1400 so i mean he's not just like unmitigated pile of garbage uh you know if you do get him you're probably going to want to put him in your uh faction wars skinwalkers team uh he's just nowhere near the, the realm in terms of uh the, ch the other champions on this list in terms of being account changing if you summon them and then we get to Stagnite. I really like this champion. Uh, really good for account progression and really generally useful. An A1, that's a multi-hitter that decreases speed. And then an A2, that can be booked to a three-turn cooldown. And a big chance of getting to 95% of the big version of decreased defense and the big version of decreased attack. And then a passive that's going to help you be a little bit more consistent in terms of your team landing debuffs. And a great base speed of 107 and good base stats. <laughs> spats good base stats of over 1000 base defense and almost 21000 hp so stagnite just a very solid generally generally useful epic and then we've got a couple of my favorite ladies in the game and the dark elf section to go over rounding out the last two champions in this 10x and that is silar and madam saris so we'll start with silar here uh Silar is a champion that not very many people talk about or really spotlight, but I love Silar. I, th I think she's super cool. She's fun to play with, and she's got a lot of utility on your account. The A1 is an AoE. You can put her in a stun set or something, and she can be very suppressive because of that. She's also got an A2 that's AoE, which again can proc those stuns and decreases accuracy so it's basically a resistance buff for your team and then she's mostly known for the a3 here that's going to decrease speed and turn meter on an aoe for all enemies so a very cool kit there and, and very kind of unique in the game and then they've added a ally speed and faction crypts by 22 percent uh after faction wars was released she didn't used to have any sort of aura but uh also a good base speed of 105 if you get her in really high speed she can be very good in the arena and very good in almost any dungeon and she's amazing in faction wars and now we round out the champions in this 10x with madam saris uh Okay, so at, now that 3v3 Arena is out, I think Saris is the best epic in the game. Uh, she's Void Affinity, so you don't have to worry about her ever being weak. And you can make an argument that you should build two or three um, Madam Saris for your account. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of situations where you're in the 3v3 Arena and you, you, you just want Saris in every team. It, like, she's a Void Legendary who's actually better because she's an epic which means the ascendancy potions and the books are more realistic to acquire so she's cheaper to build uh i just dumped my uh coffee all over myself i'm getting too excited here covering Saris. i'll leave that in the video that's funny 
Luckily, there was only like uh, half an ounce left because I've been uh, I've been getting after it here this morning. But uh, okay, we've got an A1 that places fear, and then we've got an A2 that steals a random buff, and if it does, place a block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns, and place a true fear debuff for one turn on enemies who have buff stolen. So not only is she stealing a buff, but if she does block debuffs on all allies not for one turn for two turns which is an eternity in the arena and oh that ability would be insane if it was just that but oh let's throw in a true fear for not not just a fear a true fear for one turn on any enemy that had a buff stolen ridiculous this trick or treats ability then we throw in this a3 that removes all buffs from all enemies so we got more buff stripping and place the big version of decrease attack and decrease defense not for two turns which, which would be good but for three turns <laughs> then by the way let's throw in a passive that places a shield on this champion equal to 10 percent of max hp every turn and then when attacked under a shield has a 35 percent chance of placing a, a fear on the attacker uh, good base stats of uh, 1167 defense and 20,000 HP with 100 speed. Uh, just, just an absolutely ridiculous kit. Like, I'm probably going to be building three Madam Saras on my account just to have at my disposal for tag team 3v3 arena because there's going to be certain situations where you just want three Saras. You just want one in every team. Uh, the kit is just so insane for the arena and for dungeons and uh i mean she could even be useful in like the mid-game clan buff and yeah, yeah basically she's just arguably the best epic in the game but i will also use this as an opportunity to get you guys caught up on the offers for the day and what's kind of going on here so um great deal mix pack so this is this this is the one that's going on for a week uh i will plug it in for you guys just if you want to see really quickly um we'll, we'll go 50 and then we're gonna go uh so rank four chicken times six and rank five chicken times four and 80 brews so we've got 80 brews and uh then we've got eight and five for the tomes uh 1.88 so yeah it, it's okay um yeah uh i'm not a massive fan of it uh but i would say if you're the type to spend a pretty decent amount of money and you need books it's a it's not terrible but uh personally I, I would probably hold off on this and and try to get more energy in shards but that's just uh that's just my preference and i can totally see a, a person who spends a decent amount of money scooping this up it's a 1.88 so uh you can you can definitely do worse um this one is 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 really good this is the type of pack that i like to buy so let's plug this in um yeah, this has got the silver, the energy, the gems. Very generally uh, good for your account here. So we got a million and then energy, a thousand. Uh, gems, 800 XP. And uh, we will five and two. Five, two. Okay, yeah, 2.78. So yeah, this is like literally the definition of an offer that I like to go for. Uh, it's $20, so it's reasonably priced. And it's a 2.78 with shards, gems, energy, silver, and XP. It's literally the offer I usually go for and recommend. So this one's definitely a thumbs up from me if you are the type to spend any money on raid. Uh, special potions pack. Uh, I was going to say I'm not going to plug it in, but why not? We're here. Let's do it really quick because uh, I, I, I'm assuming it's probably going to be a pass. But uh, let's uh, let's give it a chance here. Let's not judge a book by its cover. Um, let's fire it up. Oh, 800K. I don't know why I put a million. Uh, no energy. So we've got 40, 80, and then 100 superiors. 100. I think that covers it. The 800 gems, the silver. Yep. Yeah, 1.64. Um, the potion packs used to be a lot worse. They used to be like a 1.3. So they're 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 sliding up the board a little bit, but still, uh, like I said, I like to hold off and be diligent about my spending and wait for offers like this. This is what I would much rather spend my money on as opposed to uh, something like this. Mini mix pack we don't have to cover. Great deal mix pack. Uh, yeah, this one's probably worth going over. Looks like it's got potential here. Um, okay. And let's go no silver energy nine five zero and then we've got 60 brews 
60 brews and 950k and then we're gonna go seven and two uh 1.47 so okay uh so this one and and uh the, the great deal mix pack and the great deal mix pack uh this one's definitely better the first one is better uh this one's a little bit cheaper but if i was gonna spend this much i'd rather just spend enough to get this one um of all of these i would just grab this one this is the priority in my opinion i would spend that and then kind of hold off and, and be diligent about my budget for the rest of the month but uh yeah that's gonna do it for the offers let me put this away and just to recap this is probably the best 10x event I've ever seen them do. It's going to be Vizier, Harvest Jack, Venus, Occult Brawler, Ursine Ice Crusher, Stagnite, Madam Saris, and Silar are going to be starting tomorrow in terms of a 10x. So uh, typically, I recommend to hold off your shards until a 2x event because you're just you've got a much higher rate of getting more epics and legendaries for your account. But in this case gosh man uh it's really hard for me to recommend to the general public uh to go after a 10x but in this case i'm gonna say if you don't have a saris it might be worth pulling your void shards um because if you get saris that can be definitely massive for your account and if you get a venus or something uh that would just be insane um vizier is also incredible uh you know, I, I I don't know. Uh gosh, like am I like would I yank all my sacreds to go for Vizier? Jeez, I'm trying to think here live on camera. Um <laughs> like I said, guys, that that's a tough decision. I'm gonna have to wait until it launches and, and weigh my options here. But I this may be the first time I pull outside of a two X because uh I would love to get a Vizier. That's kind of my crown jewel in, in this event. Uh, I would love a Venus as well, but I think I'm going to save my voids because I already have a Ceres. If I did not have a Ceres, I would definitely pull my voids. Uh, but because I do have a Ceres, I'm probably going to wait till a 2x so that I can chase the, the Siffies and Crisk and champions like that. Uh, so I'll still hold off on my voids, but I may pull some Sacreds or something to go for Vizier. Uh, so definitely uh this is the the most justified 10x in terms of pulling your shards so i definitely wanted to cover this for you guys as soon as possible and as always thank you for watching uh let me know down in the comments what you think are you going to be pulling shards for this I, I i really like to read what you guys say and kind of how you're feeling so uh yeah as always have a good rest of your day thanks for watching peace